Hello, and thank you for joining me. This is webinar number seven to support you in parenting through the coronavirus pandemic. Today, I wanted to read something that uh, I wanted to read something that my dear friend, Dr. Shafali sent in an email yesterday or the day before. Uh, have you had, before I read that though, Ms. Turnant says, have you had any other takers so far? Um, we've had quite an okay, still surreal day. Yes, every day right now is somewhat surreal, isn't it? It's definitely an interesting, strange time for sure. So let me read something that my dear friend, Dr. Shafali sent, because I think it's so beautiful. She has been teaching this for years. She's been teaching things that really come in handy right now. And I've been learning from her and teaching others her same message. And it's beautiful what she wrote. So here we go. I'm going to read this to you. Oh, you can advertise on some Facebook groups. That would be wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Turnant. And hello, Laura. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Ms. Turnant, you should have the link to the Zoom chat, or I'm sorry, to the Zoom webinar. And that's the thing that you can share in the groups. But you also can share my YouTube channel. In there, I've on my YouTube channel, I've been posting the recordings of each webinar, but also in the description of each video, I have the link where people can go to, uh, to join the live webinars if they want. I'm gonna post that here in the, in the chat. This is the link to my YouTube channel. So uh, feel free to share that link with anyone you would like. And Laura, same, same to you. Please feel free to share that with anyone who may want it. I'm also going, I'm just going to share the link to the webinars here for you both. Uh, because if I can help more parents, even better. It is my honor during this time to serve. Oh, there's my dog. He wants to go out. Hold on just one second. Copy the invitation. Oh. Okay, here we go. I found it. I'm going to put this here and then I'm going to, this is the Zoom link for the webinar registration. I'm going to let my dog out. Go ahead. Gizmo is his name and he doesn't like when the door is closed. He likes freedom as we all do. <laughs> so yes, thank you for sharing. That would be great. And I would be honored to support parents. So Laura, I was saying to Miss Turnant that I am going to read something that my dear friend, Dr. Shafali sent out. I also would like to share her group with you guys. So let me, let me just get that because she's doing daily meditations and daily presentations as well in there. And she's just the most fabulous person ever. So I encourage you guys to consider joining her group on Facebook as well. Okay, so here's what Dr. Shafali sent uh, three days ago. The choice is clear. It is up to you to make it. Our instinct is to resist this reality as it is. In fact, this is our constant plague, to resist reality as it is. We are masters of resistance. We have always been resisting reality as it is. Whenever reality is not as we think it should be, we resist it. We enter loathing, withdrawal, depression, and anger. We believe in a certain way, this way, that way, my way, your way. And with this comes attachment. With attachment comes rigidity and stagnation. We think we can control reality and we begin to live a fake life of fake control. 
we enter the delusion that reality can be controlled. We create our own movie of reality through schedules, timelines, deadlines, milestones of achievement, prizes and competitions, institutions of education, marriage, divorce, success, beauty, longevity, religion, and so, excuse me, so many more. All of these creations give us a fake sense of predictability and knowing. And now, all of this has been blown to smithereens. But here is the truth. It was always blowing up underneath the fake surface. Reality was never constant. It was always dying and mortal. It was always chaotic and unpredictable. The truth is this. Reality just is. Always impermanent always interdependent, always unknown. There is no choice. It just is. And to resist the isness is to live in delusion. This is what this virus is showing us, our inability to enter the isness of the present moment. It is showing us our resistance to the isness. But the choice is clear. It is here to stay for now. We can choose to resist or we can choose to accept its isness. What do you choose? That is what she sent out three days ago and nothing could be more true. Laura says attachment, the obstacle. Yes, all blown up and always mortal. So true, so brilliant, so beautiful so many opportunities in this world situation. So let's talk about those opportunities. Yesterday was my daughter's 15th birthday. Fortunately, I had ordered a couple of birthday gifts prior to the world melting. And so I had two things that she really, really wanted. She sleeps under a heavy blanket and it's one that I bought her when she was three years old and she's 15 now and it's tiny it's like a lap blanket to fit a toddler or a small person so uh, she couldn't go underneath of it and not have her feet stick out the other end so I bought her one that's slightly heavier and big enough for an adult to fit underneath and I got that a month ago or six weeks ago or whatever. And then she wanted a certain pair of sweatpants, which I promptly ordered her as things started going south with this virus. And then just last week, we started watching this reality TV show called Lego Masters, which is a really fun show about a competition with teams to build Lego creations. And she loves Lego sets. And so I quickly got on at the end of last week and ordered one, a, a new set for her. And it was supposed to be delivered today, but fortunately it came yesterday just in time for her birthday. And she and I uh, baked a, a chocolate chip pan cake instead of cookies. It was just a pan of chocolate chip cookies. And uh, because we're not really supposed to be going out here so we just baked. So she loves to bake. We got a great opportunity to bake together and we made her cake instead of going out to buy one like we might have done or like we used to do in the past. Maybe we won't buy them anymore. Maybe we will just bake them because it was delicious and everyone loved it. So at the end of the day, as she snuggled down in her new long, heavy blanket. She said her birthday was wonderful. And I felt such joy and appreciation at the fact that even during this uh, stay at home order that we're under here in New Jersey, that we were able to create, a, to make birthday memories. And so instead of looking back on her 15th birthday, as, oh, remember that time 
when we were all stuck at home and we couldn't go anywhere. Now she's going to have fond memories of this 15th birthday. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful that we were able to shuffle things around and make it so that it was a fun day for her. And Miss Turnin says, there are actually so many things you can do at home. And you, you too are at a stay at home order in the UK. And I hear that they're enforcing it now and finding people who don't honor it. So I think that's really important. And unfortunately, it's very necessary. Oh, thank you, Laura, for my daughter. Your daughter's 13th was last week. And yes, you got her gift months ago. Lego. <laughs> Love it. And it is so great for your brain. Building and baking. Beautiful times together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, we are. You are stay at home too. We're all staying at home, right? One thing that I'm really enjoying is I'm really enjoying watching all of these TV personalities. Right now we have CNBC here in the U.S., playing. CNBC is a cable channel that uh, monitors the stock market, both in the U.S. and markets around the world. It's an investor's channel, basically. So normally they're talking about earnings from companies or which company is uh, inventing this new thing or has this new whatever. They're talking about market trends and business and things like that. Now it's all about coronavirus and the stimulus package that the Congress is trying to pass and what this global shutdown is doing to economies around the world and all that stuff. But all of the anchors as of today are working from home. And so they're all, we get to see all of their, I'm watching this one woman who is in her home office with a bookshelf behind her. So we're getting a crazy peek into uh, the lives, the real lives of these people who sit in a studio with their hair all perfect and the lighting perfect. And now they're just home like the rest of us. Uh, I saw that Justin Trudeau in Canada, he is, he and his three kids are on self-isolation because his wife tested positive for the virus maybe last week or something. So she's isolated from them, but they're also quarantined from the world because they were exposed to her. And it's fascinating because he does press conferences from his front step and he has the press come to his front yard, keeping a safe distance, of course. But this article that I read talked about how he's running the country of Canada while also running bath time because their children are ages 12, 11, and six. So he's being Mr. Mom, what we call Mr. Mom. He's being stay-at-home dad and also the prime minister of Canada because his wife can't help. And because they're in self-quarantine, they can't have babysitters, they can't have grandparents, they can't have nannies, they can't have anybody come in to help them. So he's caring for his three children while he's trying to run the country of Canada. Wow. Talk about extraordinary times. Extraordinary. And he's doing it. And so his press conferences are happening in his front yard. It's just incredible. It is incredible to me the way humanity can step up when we are in times of great challenge, right? If we think about, uh, the the people who lived through the world wars they're commonly referred to as the greatest generation they sacrificed so much they worked so hard they lived through the depression they they ate less food they probably went hungry they had holes in their shoes they rose to such a challenge, such a dire time in the world. And this is our dire time. And you can find examples all over the world of people who are stepping up to this challenge and they are getting the job done. Whether it's the, the prime minister of Canada taking bathing his kids and running a country, or whether it's one of us 
moms or dads living at home, sheltered at home, trying to help our kids get through online schooling and everything in between. We have grocery store workers who are risking their own health and safety to go out and provide food for us. Amazing. We have healthcare workers who are on the front line risking their health and safety to take care of us. Amazing. Every bit of this is amazing. Yes, we can find examples of people who are who who are maybe overreacting or who have undesirable reactions even in our own kids because they're going through a tremendously stressful time. So there are those examples too, but there are so many examples of people who are just rising like a phoenix out of this challenging time and it is so inspiring to me. So let me just take a quick look at what you guys have been saying. Yes. The real story it makes us all equal, relatable. Trudeau is running the country and making lunches and work at his office, at the office. His wife is in a different part of the house quarantined. Yes, it's extraordinary what he's doing. I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of him. And single parents do this all the time. Yes, you're absolutely right. He tweeted Michael Blue and other Canadians to ask people to stay home. And that was exactly the right thing. Yes, even us parents who are home with our kids, we are, we may not be running a country, but we're still doing a very important job of helping our kids move through this very challenging time. Thank you, Ms. Turnant, that you have, I see that you had to go. Take good care of your daughter and I'll hopefully see you next time when you can pop in. We can learn so much from the wise elders now yet many of them are passing away due to the virus. My nephew works in the grocery store. My cousin is an ICU nurse, both on the front lines. Yes, so many great things happening. Please send my deepest thanks to your nephew and to your cousin because they are, they are the heroes right now. I read somewhere a few days ago that said that a grocery store clerk may not have felt their job was all that important, but boy, it's one of the most important jobs in the world right now. The grocery store clerk, the shelf stockers, the, uh, my brother-in-law is, uh, works at a warehouse for CVS. So he's in charge of making sure all the items when they come in from the suppliers get packaged properly and sent to the individual CVS stores. And his job right now, which never felt so important to him, is so vital because that's part of the supply chain. And if he's not there to get the products sent off to CVS stores, then we have nothing we can buy. So it's really neat to, to see his job rank up quickly in importance. Walmart workers, thank you. So nice to see them recognized. Absolutely. And what it reminds me, yes, yeah, so many other essential workers, we love you and thank you. Yes, yes, Laura. And what it reminds me is that, or what it, what it points out to all of us or reminds us is that we're all equal. We're all one. We may have previously looked at some hierarchy of, you know, if you or a CEO, or a professional athlete, or a famous actor, or something that you, or a, or a, a world-renowned doctor that you have higher value in the world than someone who works at a movie theater, or a child, or a babysitter, or a postal worker. That's not true. Those people who were previously revered are no different than anybody else. That doctor who works in that emergency room who's taking care of the sick coronavirus patient is no better than the sick coronavirus patient. We're very grateful for that emergency room doctor's service at this time, but they are absolutely equal 
to the patient in that bed. And every other person is equal to every other person. So that's a really important thing to remember during this time. And I really hope that as we come out of this time, because there will be a light at the end of the tunnel. We don't know how far away it is right now, but there will be. When we come out of this dark tunnel that we're in, if we could remember the lessons that we're all learning right now, the world will not be recognizable. It'll be, there's such an opportunity for us to emerge back into a more beautiful, more healthy, world. Oh, that's my deepest wish. Hard times bring us all together. These are hard times, but it brings humanity together. Always a light. I pray people are deeply and positively changed by this experience. Laura, I couldn't agree with you more. This, this is what it's all about. I was working with one of, I had a session over the phone with one of my clients this morning and I said to her, this is your time to shine. I, I do parent coaching with her. This is your time to shine. All that we've been working on, all that you've been practicing, this is your time to shine. All those things you've been practicing, now is the time to use them. So it's really an extraordinary time. And Many of us have been preparing for this day for years. We just didn't realize it. And those of us who have done the work and have done the preparation, so many of us are stepping up and supporting everyone else who's just coming to the party a little bit late. And it's just a beautiful thing. So much support on so many levels from so many people. And I just love it. Yes, how empowering. So I think I'm going to wrap that up. Unless, Laura, do you have any final uh, enlightening or uplifting statements that you'd like to share? Because I'd love to share it with those who can tune in afterwards. But yes, what you said. We pray that people are positively changed by this experience. That could be the greatest gift that comes out of this dark tunnel, this time of incubation, a better world. Let's all work towards that. And let me know how I can support you. Laura says, just wanted to share love with everyone and to say, keep positive. We're all in this together, praying for everyone. I second that, Laura. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to have Laura come on and chat with us on a future episode. So we're going to try to figure that out in our schedules. So blessings to all your listeners and you, Aaron, and the world. Yes, right back at you, Laura. Okay, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you here tomorrow at the same time.